we're going to be tough every single game. You know, we're going to bring it every single game. There'll be no nights off. We're going to give no team no passes. And um, when they see that they have Orlando on the schedule, they know they're going to have a fight. A confident Aaron Gordon throwing down the gauntlet to the rest of the NBA, and he tips off our deep dive into the Orlando Magic. Rick Campbell with Greg Anthony, Hall of Famer Kevin McHale, and we'll have plenty of analysis on Orlando's best player throughout the show. But let's begin with their prize draft pick, Mo Bamba, who was taken with the sixth pick of the 2018 draft after one season with the Texas Longhorns in GA. They trade away Bismack Biombo. They obviously still have Booch, but they trade away Biombo uh, to free up some time there for Mo Bamba. Is that how you see that? Oh, well, listen, you, you draft a guy that high, he, he is going to be a part of the rotation, especially on a team that's not projected to be a playoff team. And, and I think that, that Mo fits the modern big game. I mean, he's got tremendous length and athleticism. He can play in space. I think he's a much better offensive player than he had the opportunity to show while at Texas. Uh, and this is the kind of guy that I think the sky is the limit. He, he, he has as much of a ceiling as anybody that was drafted this past June. And it's just a matter of how long does it take him to get comfortable at this level, how long before he's physically strong enough to impose his will at this level. But from a talent standpoint and a work ethic, I think the kid's going to be okay. Yeah, no, I like him too. I, you, you watch that little clip of him and I watching him. He doesn't have the strength enough to go by anybody. Everything he does is ends up with a pull-up. He's got to get enough strength to get down low, lower that shoulder, get that ball, and start using that length around the basket. I do like the fact he's got a nice touch. He doesn't have a defined game yet. He's not a post player. He's not a great enough shooter to say I'm a pick-and-pop guy. But he's got to become, He just got to get better at a lot of different areas. But I liken him a little bit to Anthony Davis when Anthony mm. Davis came out. Had a nice touch. Like when he shoots the ball, it tries to go in. Like a lot of guys, they shoot the ball, it can't get away from the room fast <laughs> enough. His ball hangs around there and tries to go in. He's got a nice soft touch. So I see him really improving and getting a lot better. I like him on the defensive end right now way better. He can block shots. He can move his feet. He's thin. So he's got a lot of room to grow. But I, I like his potential. So, and, and you guys follow it. We all follow it. What, what happens in the pre-draft process and one of the uh, big bits of buzz was the improved shooting of Mo Bamba and all the work that he was putting in with Drew Hanlon uh, you know there were videos out on Twitter about you know him stroking shot after shot uh, talk about that and did you see a difference in Mo Bamba from his time at Texas and then with that work with Drew Hanlon absolutely now full disclosure Mo played with my son in high school uh, a couple years ago before he went to Texas. Uh, and so I got to see firsthand his development. Uh, and the thing about a kid like Mo Bamba is it's not whether or not he can do something now, it's whether or not he has the ability to do it later, much like Anthony Davis. And that's what's impressive about him. He's got the capacity to continue to improve. The guy who I think of more, not that he plays the same way, but from a growth standpoint is Giannis. Because Giannis was a really raw player when he came into the league. Nobody could necessarily see him emerging to become what he has. And, and I think on the front line, not that he's going to be a facilitator, but I think that Mo Bamba could develop that way on your front line. Because I think he can be a terrific shot blocker. I think he's going to be able to score with his back to the basket. But I think also he can consistently make a 15- to 17-footer. So I, I do think if I'm Orlando, I'm excited about the prospects with the improvement of Gordon. Uh, as well. I, I think their future for the first time in a long time, there's a reason to be optimistic if you're an Orlando Magic fan. Yeah, I agree. I think that you know, he's got to improve, but everybody's got to improve around him, too. Like you talked about Gordon. Gordon, to me, has got to become just a really consistent guy. He does the, you know, the highlight film stuff. He goes up and he makes some dunks. He has two or three plays a game that you go, man. But you know what? To win in this league, you've got to make 40, 50 plays that are just solid. Drive, kick, throw it to this guy. You know, make the right pass. Make the right play. Shoot, knock down open shots when you got it. And develop a game. Like Gordon's the same way. Where are you going to play him all the time? Is he a pick and pop? Is he a pick and roll? He, he can do a little bit of everything, but he's got his game just got to get tighter and their whole team has, has got to get tighter they just have got to they've got to improve they've got a long way to go but they're they, they do have some hope like you yeah. say looking at the, some of their players they do they have, they have some intriguing pieces no doubt about it so with all due respect to Nikola Vucevic and to Mo Bamba Aaron Gordon is the undisputed face of this franchise and the Magic confirmed that in the offseason, giving him a four-year, $84 million contract uh, but AG is still determined to get a lot better on the court I got to bring it every night. 
uh, Coach Cliff was telling me, you know, some nights I would bring it if it was an all-star or if it was a first team, second team, third team type player. But if it wasn't, then I wouldn't bring it. I'd, I'd be taking the nights off. So every night I got to bring it. Uh, to me, I got a defensive rebound better. And uh, one thing that I talked about, he didn't really care about so much. Is I feel like I need to up my steals, uh, the amount of steals, the off-ball steals that I get. So let's take a look at the year-by-year -year improvement for Aaron Gordon, going from 5 to 9 to 13 to 17 last year with the scoring. The three-point shooting still a work in progress, but he got in the 30s last year at 33.6%. So what is next, GA and Kevin, for Aaron Gordon? I think what Kevin talked about, you know, he almost doubled his three-point attempts, um, which, you know, you want your best player to be able to shoot the three, but I, I think he can be so dynamic and put so much pressure on the defense if he attacks more. I, I'd like to see him play more like Giannis yeah. in terms of trying to uh, put pressure on the defense, getting to the rim, getting your team in the penalty. I, I think he's got that ability. I, I, I felt, even though he improved the jump shot, I felt he fell in love with his jump mm. shot a year ago. And if you're going to be the face of a franchise, to Kevin's point, you've got to be consistent at every facet. Yeah. You know, your team has to know what they can rely upon when you take the floor. Your jump shot can't dictate your impact on the game. And I thought you saw also his rebounding improve over a couple assists a game. So he's trending in the right direction. I think he's got a chance to be an all-star in this league. And this will be a big year for him in terms of taking that next step. Yeah, then you've got to get a spot on the floor where the coach feels comfortable giving you balls to close out game. Is it the elbow? Is it the right elbow, left elbow, right box, left box? Where is it? So you've got to define your game a little bit tighter when you're the face of the franchise so the coach can come out and design something for you. And so I just think he's just got to get better. I mean, he's a young guy. He's improving, steady. But he's got to find his spots on the floor where he's really effective. When I say spots on the floor, that's I throw you the ball at a spot on the floor. And the opposing coach says, oh, no, he's going to get a really good shot unless I bring help. This guy's really good from the right elbow, left or wherever it is. And that forces the defense to, you know, yeah. to make compensations and run people at you. That's his next level, becoming a great player on a playoff team. And, G.A., to your point, two threes made last year on 5.9 attempts. That is a high volume for a guy who's slated to play power forward. But in two seasons as the Orlando head coach, Frank Vogel, posted a 54-110 record, he was replaced by that man, Steve Clifford, who spent the past five seasons in Charlotte. It's a return engagement of sorts for Cliff, who served as an assistant under Stan Van Gundy in Orlando from 2007 to 2012, including their trip to the NBA Finals. Is Cliff the right coach to turn Orlando's fortunes around? I like the hire um, in part because I think he's going to help them improve defensively, which oftentimes with a really young team is the hardest thing for them to commit to. Uh, and, and, you know, young man, we didn't talk about Jonathan Isaacs, who's also, I, I thought, showed some flashes this summer. Didn't really have an impact a season ago, but I think he's ready to, to kind of help solidify that front line as well. They're going to have their struggles, but I do think they're going to be an improved basketball team. And listen, I think Clifford inherited a similar situation in Charlotte. You know, young team, mm -hmm. unproven, got them in the postseason. I think you could see this team starting to trend in that direction uh, this season. Yeah, you know, I like the fact that um, their best player, Gordon, came out and said the coach challenged me to play hard all the yeah. time. I mean, that's the first thing you got to do. I mean, I hate, I hate like heck to see a player say that coach had to challenge me to play hard all the time. But it's also Clifford is, 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 is addressing things head on. Where it's like, hey, you got to play harder. You got to do this. You got to do that. I think he's going to be straightforward with the guys, get them to play hard every single night, get them to go out there and get after it. Offensively, sometimes with Steve, I watch his teams play, and I'm like, a little bit more creativity, yeah. maybe a little bit more push, a little bit more uh, uh, pace in the game. But I like him as a coach. Mo Bamba is a terrific young man, as you will find out now, because Ro Parrish caught up with Mo at Orlando's Media Day and asked him about joining a franchise with a history of famous big men. If you look at the track record of, of our organization, you know, you got Dwight and you got Shaq, obviously. And, if I can be, my career can go anything as well as theirs, and I'd be doing something pretty special. So speaking of special, we know draft night was special for you. You've been able to be drafted into the NBA. You've got settled in Orlando. Now tell me how that whole process has been, and are you comfortable so far now that you're in a new city? 
Oh, absolutely. Um, I've just kind of gained my grounds with the city and just kind of, you know, figured out where things were. And uh, getting settled was, was actually pretty easy. Orlando hasn't made the playoffs in the last six seasons. What is it going to take for you guys to make that leap and get into the postseason? It's going to take a level of togetherness. You know, I haven't played an NBA game yet, but I know whenever one unit, whenever a unit is, is, is all synced in mentally, mentally, uh, it goes a long ways. So let's talk about wingspans for a second. We know that when you extend your arms, it's probably about nine feet. Uh, we, we know the situation right now. You have Jonathan Isaacs down there with you. His wingspan is 7'10". <laughs> so it is, is it safe to say that you two have rim protection on lock in Orlando? Um, I mean, we, <laughs> we, we, we have the tools to, to be great rim, rim protectors. Um, it's just a matter of getting out there and doing it. So since Summer League, what are some of the things that you've worked on individually to improve your game going into your first season? Oh, I've gotten a ton of reps up in my jump shot. And you know, one of the things that I, that I did to, to, to play in the NBA was uh, improve the pace of, of my jump shot and my mechanics. Because um, a lot of it in pre-draft was just working on mechanics and just mastering, you know, what the perfect form for me looks like. And now it's just a matter of, you know, making the game speed so I can get my shot off over and in front of anyone. So how comfortable are you with Coach Clifford's system and how much have you been able to get acclimated before training camp starts? Oh, we've, we've I mean, we've, we've had these optional workouts all September long and you know, everyone's been in. And apparently that's a, it's a rarity in the NBA, um, but everyone's been in, everyone's been, been at it. And, um, you know, it's just so we can gain our grounds before training camp even starts. We kind of hit the ground running. So now you're going to be a teammate of a movie star and Aaron Gordon. We saw him this summer make his film debut. How has it been like working with him? Oh, it's been awesome. You know, Aaron is a very supportive guy, but, you know, he, he gets at it. And you kind of develop that same attitude from him, whether if it's in a weight room, whether if it's on a court or wherever. So in order to win the Rookie of the Year, I need you to finish this sentence. Mo Bamba needs to do what to win Rookie of the Year? Have impact. Uh, if you look at if you look back at all of the guys who were rookie of the years, they had immediate impact in the league. And time will tell about Mo Bamba. Here is a look at our projected depth chart for the Magic. They added point guard Jaron Grant in a three-team trade during the offseason. Jonathan Simmons and Terrence Ross give Steve Clifford two explosive guards to rotate. And forward Jonathan Isaac, and I say forward because is he a four, is he a three? We'll find out. But he enters the second season after being drafted sixth overall back in 2017. <clears throat> Rick Campbell, Greg Anthony, and Kevin McHale. And Mac, in our previous segment, you talked about the importance of Aaron Gordon finding his sweet spots on the floor and what Steve Clifford can do as the head coach to help him find those. Well, you're a coach, you're a GM, you're a Hall of Famer. Let's tap into your brain. Where do you think could and should be his sweet spots on the floor? He's a combo guy to me. He's a combo 3-4. So he's going to play against smaller guys. He's going to play against bigger guys. But everything works in, in, the, in, the, in the same areas. He should be a guy. That, I'm not sure, like I said, you've got to work with him. Is it right elbow? Is it left elbow? But he's got to be a guy that can get the ball one dribble away from his sweet spot, one dribble away from getting a great shot. I don't like him out at the three-point line or where you're in two and three dribbles away. It's got to be, like if Greg's guarding me and we run a little high post stuff here, I've got to get, be able to get the ball rip, you know, rip hard, get that ball out in front of me hard, end up in here, and then going up for a shot, one dribble away, finishing at the rim and in, in here. I, I like to see him be a one dribble attack guy because against smaller guys, you one dribble attack, they move their feet, you shoot over the top and you're bigger. Um, the bigger, slower guys, one dribble attack, spin, get to the rim, try to get fouled. And so his, his working area, I would like to see the one dribble out. So he's always catching the ball 12, 14 feet from the basket. Well, one thing I would say, a couple things. One, I look at him and I said, listen, with your athletic ability and your skill set, you've got to get six to eight free throws a game. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing he's got to do. Secondly, he's got to understand what a good shot is for him. And a lot of times with young players, and, and Kevin knows this, like you're always trying to prove what you can do. And you end up doing a lot of things you don't do well. Yeah. And, and we've seen that even with him thus far. So to Kevin's point, Find out where your sweet spots are. Find out where your areas are where you know you can make the play that needs to be made. But if, I think if he focuses on those areas, I would like to see his three-point shooting come down. I don't, six threes a, a game from him I think is a lot. If he's around four 
and his free throws go up for, mm -hmm. now I think he's going to have a bigger impact. His team's going to be better as well. Why? Because those extra threes, when you're not making them, those are runouts. All right? When you get those extra free throws, we get to set our defense. Right? Like, those are important elements to his development as a player. Understanding if he's going to be their leading scorer, his shot selection is going to be critical. It's going to be really important and his ability to get to the stripe and help get his team in the penalty. So those are things, if I'm Steve Clifford and that coaching staff, when we went and watched and broke down film, I bet you 30% of his shots were shots he probably shouldn't have taken. And mm -hmm. so he's got to learn that aspect in terms of growing. And when you're in the penalty, the easiest way to get to the line is hard driving. Because you know, can't put a hand on anybody anymore. So you get the ball up here in these areas, and you reverse pivot, and I come at you hard. You can get you can get to the line in the penalty without ever shooting the ball. This is you know you go by me, I hand check you. It's two free throws. He's got to get a lot more of that. So he's got to get those points that come easier for him. Everything can't be a struggle for the young fella. Mo Bamba, six ten wingspan. We know what that's going to do for rim. Uh, seven ten yeah. wingspan. Yeah. Pardon me. We know what that's going to do for rim protection. But what other areas of his game can that help? Well, it helps in his ability to switch out on perimeter players. One thing I, that amazed me about this guy, he will block three-point shots. We've seen it with Clint Capella. Yeah. He is difficult for good guards to get by because of his length and lateral quickness. And as he gets stronger and more comfortable, he's going to be a, a, a real terror out on that perimeter, and it's going to create a lot of options for Steve Clifford mm -hmm. and that coaching staff defensively. As a long-arm guy myself, helps right here. <laughs> when I get that ball here and I go up and you're shooting that over the top of people, you extend. It's hard to get up and challenge it. So what you do, once you get comfortable, he was talking about getting the speed of his shot and all that stuff. But once you get comfortable, you understand that when you extend and get up here, you got a clean look. The guy's not going to block it. So there's a comfort level in having long arms and being able to have that ball at a high release point. We're back with some notes on the Magic. They will be a part of the Mexico City games this year. They have not made the playoffs since 2012, and they haven't had an All-Star since 2012. And, of course, that was Dwight Howard. Kamla, Anthony, and Mikhail. And, guys, incumbent center Nikola Vucevic comes off another fine season. 16-9-3 and three were his stats, roughly. But he enters the final year of his contract. The Athletic is already reporting that he's expected to be available on the trade market. So does he even make it to the all-star break or the trade deadline in this uniform? Well, uh, he probably was on the trade market in June when they drafted Mo Bamba. Uh, I, I do think that you're going to see him made available. What will be interesting and what teams are going to be interested in him. Yeah, he did show an ability to shoot the three. But can he defend in space? When you think about the modern game and the elite teams, their bigs have that ability. So uh, I'm anxious to see what teams are going to show a lot of interest in the young man. Yeah, I think he's a nice piece on the team. I, he's not going to be a guy that you're going to trade for and say we're building around him. He's going to be, an, I, think, I think a lot of playoff teams would like to have him on their roster. So let's go more or less on the Orlando Magic. Uh, you going with a high number or you going 31 and a half? You Ooh. going more or less than that? I'm going to go less. Mm. I, I think it, it, they still haven't proven themselves to have an established player that's ready to lead them in, in those big moments. Fournier, I do think, is a little underrated. I think Gordon's improving. But because those other young guys haven't established themselves in this league, it's going to be a challenge for them. Yeah, I'm going to go under also. I think, you know, Mo Bamba is going to be a very good player, but not so much this year, you know, this next year. I just think they have, they have, they can build around Gordon and Bamba, so their future is bright, but I think they're going to struggle a little bit this year.